Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 55 of the Showbound Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Raskin, here along with Ethan Cardwell. Cards, what's going on? Yeah, not too much. Uh, another early morning episode for you and I, but uh, we're going to bring the energy today. It's uh, We got a, f- a fun segment here and then obviously a great interview to come. So I'm doing great. You? Yeah, I'm good. You, you know, it's you know, it's early morning when I when I have this look going, when I got the hood going over the hat, just trying to like hide my face. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. I, uh, I went to the Toronto rock home opener, which I sent you some, some pictures and videos and stuff, which was in Hamilton for the first time in a long time. And that was nasty. That was fun. And you know, who was there? Uh, Jack Beck, he was there as well. And really? his, his cousin plays on Albany. He was saying the other team that the rock was playing. Um, so that's interesting. So, little show bound bump. And then, uh, yeah man that was fun but but what are you been up to yeah and a quiet week eh yeah a quiet week well um obviously as everybody knows now like Sudbury had the COVID cancellations um and we had a home and home set up against them so like we've had like a long time since our last game it was on like last Thursday and then now we have to wait till Saturday so just a week of practices but now we're having some fun making some fun out of it having shootouts three on three and like some days off in between so it's it's been a good week though kind of just reset like refresh and then kind of hit it hard before the Christmas break here so we're excited where we're at I'm kind of happy to have some days off here kind of mentally and like physically just have have a rest you know you need that especially kind of coming up towards Christmas you get like I don't know some people call it like the dog days of the season and then um and yeah so we're uh, we're gonna be coming out fresh on Saturday, so I'm really looking forward to getting the games going again. Yeah, there, there's always a debate of you know does the well rested team win or does the team who played the night before and is you know is their minds are ready to go win? It's always an interesting one. So we'll see. Who who are you playing Saturday? We have a home and home set up against North Bay. So okay. Um, Saturday, I think at home and then Sunday, quick turnaround, two o'clock game on the road, which is always a tough one, but uh, it'll be a good challenge because we're both battling the same elements, I guess. So yeah. we're looking forward to it and, I, and let's hope the, the rested team comes out on top this time. Yeah. Now we should announce our guest. We have Dylan Duke plays on Michigan, fourth round pick of the Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, American kid. We don't have too many Americans on. We've been getting a decent amount lately, but um that's a, a good interview. We're going to get to you guys in a bit, but we did ask actually, before we even get into uh, our fan questions, I wanted to say too, when I was driving home from the rock game cards, like five minutes onto my drive home, five minutes in, I'm like uh, on the QEW and I got nailed my car by a flying rock and it cracked my windshield in two places. And I was so mad because I thought I had to pay for it, but I, I took it in um, yesterday morning to get it fixed and it was free with my insurance so that was, that was nice but i was pissed yeah that's a joke eh? yeah that sucks and there's nothing you can do about it uh anyway last week we asked for we said we were going to take some fan questions on this episode we asked for some on instagram if you're not following us on instagram it's at showbound podcast and then you you'll be able to ask your fan questions and all that too so go do that um we picked 15 now there was there was a lot but we had to get rid of a lot of them because we, we can't do this forever. So we picked 15, what I think are some good ones. So uh, I guess I'll just read it cards. Maybe you go first, I'll go second or something. Some of them are just for you. Some are just for me, but yeah, you be the question master here and just yeah. fire them. <laughs> so first one, OHL rink rankings, worst two and best two. You want to go first? No, nah, you go first. Oh, Kind of putting me on the spot here. I, I have I have mine in mind, I guess, if you want. I, I could go. Yeah, yeah, you go. Be- best two, London and Kitchener. Um, yeah. And worst two, I put, I, I'm thinking Sudbury and Owen Sound. Pick on the north. Yeah, yeah. For, I let, okay, yeah, I'll go um, Niagara, um, Kitchener, best two. Okay. Um, and then worst to Sudbury and Flint. Okay. Um, 
and that's like no nothing against those rinks just uh personal <laughs> performances there in the past and just like i don't know they could use an update maybe <laughs> <laughs> um best looking ohl jerseys well i'm a bit biased right now but so i gotta say the colts say okay what if if you can't answer barry for anything if i couldn't answer barry well, I loved Saginaw, man. Saginaw had – I love that red, blue, and white with, like, kind of, like, the American flag kind of, like, mixed in the logo. It was, it, that was really nice. Like, I was a big fan of that. Um, but if I couldn't choose one of the two teams that I've played for, you mean? Yeah. Hmm. You have your answer? Yeah. Well, I have, like, That's two good. answers. At first, it was Ottawa 67s for me, but then I also thought – Oshawa Generals, maybe like, and the way they mix in their third jerseys and stuff. So I, yeah. I'd probably say Ottawa one and Oshawa two in my head. Yeah, maybe I maybe I'll say the Sioux. They look pretty sharp. Like, yeah. uh, it's kind of like Oshawa. They're like older franchises and stuff, mm-hmm. and it's like they don't have like they don't try to do too much with their jerseys. They just keep it simple, and it just looks really sharp. Yeah. Um, thoughts on Brant Clark getting snubbed on the World Junior Camp invite? Yeah, man, I was I was in complete shock when I heard about that. Obviously, we all know Clark, he's an amazing player, and he's one of the best well-rounded defensemen in Canada right now, and there's no doubt about that. And his offensive abilities are off the charts. So um, whatever happened there happened, and I'm sure uh, it'll just add fuel to the fire for him to have a better year for us in Barry here, um, which I have no doubt he will. And... Um, moving forward for hockey Canada next year, I think uh, this little adversity will play a big role and he'll, he'll go and lead them to gold next year. How about you? Yeah. I mean, I, I just don't understand why he wouldn't at least get the invite to camp. I agree with everything you said, but it just seems weird that he wouldn't, even if you're going to cut him, like he's, he at least should be going to that camp. That That's all I think about it. Um, Brandon Coe, who just showbound bump signed with the San Jose Sharks yesterday. He asks if Barry is making a run. A hundred percent, we're making a run. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a uh, lot of talk of me and Cozy room together at uh, Sharks camp for like two and a half, two two weeks. Yeah, so um, a lot of talk about the OHL and who's making a run and stuff. And North Bay's in first now, so he's he's been grinding my gears a little bit about Barry's start. But uh, no. This will be a big weekend to settle a lot of uh, a lot of the talk, but uh, congrats, yep. Cozy, for signing. Yep. Um, for Rask, what are some ways to get involved with university hockey management? By the way, I was inspired by Rask and applied to Brock for sport management. So that was a cool one. Yeah, Garzy's clapping. Um, I'd say, first of all, if you get into Brock, then message me. And then I can help you out. That's one way. If, well, it's not that hard. You just have to walk and talk and you can get into Brock. But <laughs> um, So if you can walk and talk, let me know. But yeah, what are some ways to get involved? I guess the the classic one is you, is email the coach. But at least at Brock, we'll get like a lot of emails in the off season from sport management kids and they can go unnoticed. So I'd say you got to maybe – walk into a game and just try to meet one of the coaches before or after the game and, and introduce your face to them. Cause if they see your face then it's a little different kind of same goes with any job you want. Um, cold emailing is like a good idea, but it doesn't always work because the boss will get a lot. So if you have a connection, so if you're a showbound listener and you're coming to Brock, like, let me know. We have our ticket guy cards. I, I, I sent you a snap with him the one time. He's a big showbound fan. Remember? The yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and uh, he does our tickets for the hockey, so he's he's doing that. He's trying to move on up within the hockey team ranks. So, so that was pretty funny. Um, That's but yeah, just show your face at a game and try to meet somebody, and and yeah, send an email. Honestly, man, like I, I'm sure, like you would agree with this. Like you got to start anywhere, really, in the totem pole too. So like, that, yeah, that's how it goes. Like you kind of just got to like sacrifice, even if you don't want to do that job for a little bit. Like just do it and like do it to a T for like as long as you can. And then if they, nobody notices you, then whatever, move on. But like, if you do your job to a T and it's a lower end job, they're going to, they're going to bump you up. So 
Yeah, just just go in any in any job, any sport, whatever. Go and if you can, just be like, look, like I'll put me in this organization. I'll volunteer. I'll work for free. I'll do what you need, and I'll show you that you you're gonna need to hire me. Like make yourself valuable. But start start as a volunteer. Like people won't say no. Um, and okay, this is an interesting one, card. If the NHL announces a thirty third team, which city do you think should get it? Quebec. Okay, I, I said the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a no brainer. Um, yeah. just with like how passionate they are and stuff, and I would love to see the the Montreal versus Quebec rival. That would be unbelievable for uh, the game of hockey, and just to bring back Quebec into the NHL would be pretty special. I know we saw it with Winnipeg a bunch of years back now, and uh, and it's been a success there. So I don't see any reason why uh, there can't be a team in Quebec, and just like for the hockey world and how passionate Canadian fans are, it should already have been there years ago. Yeah. Um, I definitely agree. If you could give advice to your 15 year old self, what would it be? You want to go first? Yeah, I have my note down here. This one is kind of like a little bit of a story, but I won't tell the whole story, but the advice would be when something bad happens to you or negative, you have to find where the positive is. You have to understand that, it's like a one door closes, another door opens thing. And the one thing, I don't know if you you know this card, but last summer, like two, yeah, two summers ago, I was up for a job with the Peets and I went pretty deep into the interview process with them and I didn't end up getting the job and I was like pretty upset about it. Uh, but my advice, to, which I now follow, was like not getting this job might be the best thing that ever happened in my life. Like you got to look at it that way. And then with, without getting that job, now I'm doing my MBA and I started the podcast, which both of those I wouldn't have done if I had got the job. And and these have changed my life in other ways, obviously for the better. So it's like, an, you got to look at it that way for any time, kind of something bad or else, or else you're going to just be like sulking the whole time and hate yourself. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I, I just want to personally thank the Peterborough Peets for not hiring you. Uh, <laughs> no, but... Uh... Yeah, I think that's great advice. And I, I think for me, I can – I'll give kind of along the lines of a hockey player's advice, really, to just, like, for the young listeners coming up. It's honestly just don't take things too serious. Like, don't be too hard on yourself. Just, like, try to have fun with the game still. Like, everyone thinks you go to the OHL and uh, it's turned into a business. You can't have fun anymore. Like, whatever, it's it's a job now. and. I, I totally disagree because I think all the guys, even in the NHL, as much as it's a job and you go there and you put in your four or five hours a day on getting better, you're still a kid and you got to have fun. Right. And I kind of noticed that at NHL camp, these guys, they're, they're making millions of dollars to be there and they're, they're working so hard on the ice and in the gym, but they're, they're still cracking smiles. They're still making jokes and just like having a good time while they're doing it. It's not uh, it's not like you're miserable being there and stuff like that. So just like be grateful for what you have going to the rink every day, being able to play the sport you love. And that's what I tell my younger self. Just go enjoy it. Never be uh, too hard on yourself because things are always going to turn around no matter what you're going through. So kind of just stay positive, enjoy the moment and things will take care of itself and always work hard. There you go. I love that um that's a good one cards okay this is for me but you i think you maybe can also answer it cards but what did you major in in university what do you want to do with it i know like you're in courses are you in a major no i'm just taking a bunch of electives right now because like i'm not sure what i want to do or pursue or like if i end up going pro then i'll just have to like take courses and then i'll have to pick a major and do online courses as i go but what are you Tell. in my undergrad i took sport management and right now i'm doing my master's of business administration uh with a minor in sustainable commerce so what do i want and what do i want to do with it um that's kind of changed i don't know i don't want to say the full thing but i just i want to be involved in hockey that's what i'll say as long as i'm like i want to work in in a business like i want to be on on the business end of things and but i want to be involved in hockey and uh, I don't want to get too much more into it. Cards knows what I have on the go, though. So yeah, you got you got some big things coming. I mean, <laughs> you, you're you're coming off hot for sure, and I think it's only going to take off even more once you get your MBA. 
I hope so. Um, have you been keeping up with women's hockey? Um, well, actually, I, I was watching some of the uh, Capital – what what was it called? The Capital, capital Cup. Capital City Challenge. Capital City Challenge there where, like, Aiki from my team went to that. So I was watching a little bit of that and, like, seeing the women play there. And it's uh, it was weird. It was so weird to watch, uh, like, my teammate, like, play against the women but uh it was uh it was pretty cool to watch and i applaud the women for like their great efforts out there and all uh they i want the one game i watched is like a tight battle they they lost in overtime but uh other than that i haven't like been watching too much obviously with the olympics coming up i'm really gonna dial in i love watching uh watching the women's hockey at uh at that time do, do you watch any women's hockey you ask i don't watch any professional women's hockey i've just been watching the Brock women's hockey team. Um, and I keep up with the women's like U sports uh, hockey, but I haven't really, I, I've seen one women's professional game this year, the Toronto six, cause they played before we did against York one time. And it was pretty sick. It was like sold out crowd. Um, they play and, anatomy. No, that was at a uh, Canland York. Oh, York. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking Ry- Ryerson, right? Yeah. That'd be a good ring for a, a women's pro team for sure. Yeah, I think they should move them in there. They yeah, should honestly, sick. they should honestly just play at the Scotia Bank. That would be sick too. Like, yeah, why not? That, that like, why not? Nasty. I don't it get probably it. comes down to a money thing. That's what the whole debate has been about for years with the women's league now. Because the rent in 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 the Scotia Bank would be really high, and I don't know they're gonna, you know, if the NHL would subsidize it or the MLSC. I don't know. It, it's the ongoing debate. Um, yeah, I think. I I think yeah, like we we should like put the money into it and make it like a bigger market thing, you know, to get, yeah. give everyone a shot. And like, actually speaking of women's hockey, um, I just saw Taya Curry committed to university of province for yeah. women's hockey. Um, so that's interesting. It looks like she'll stay with the girls, but uh, a show bound bump as a former guest of the pod. Yeah. It's, it's uh it was cool when i saw that i was like kind of hoping she wouldn't make any commitments so everyone would keep thinking maybe she'll she'll try to get to the ohl which would be really cool but uh yeah. i guess it's now she had to d- make that decision to play in the olympics and stuff right wasn't she saying like she had to play with women to make um hockey canada stuff um yeah i i think she was saying that's like some sort of rule but like she'll definitely be on like their uh their u18 team and stuff yeah like that. I, I don't i'm not saying olympics this year but if she wants to play in the olympics one day which i'm sure is a big goal for her like she she had she couldn't play in the ohl i don't think yeah no i i don't i don't think so i think she said something along those lines um i can't even re- remember exactly. which, which is the dumbest rule i'm sorry that is so stupid it should but, be like it should be like applauded if you yeah if you play, like if you can but no, I'm that's that's really good for her. And she's 2026 Olympics. I bet you would be watching her for uh, the Canadians. Yeah. Um, OK, a couple more cards. Why did you choose OHL over NCAA? Talk about huh. Right on right on topic there. Yeah. Um, that was, that's actually a good question, because a lot of people like a lot of people don't know is like a lot of OHL kids have like if you're a higher end round, like higher round pick going into the OHL draft, you have talked to some schools and schools reach out in minor midget and stuff like that to talk about like verbal commitments and, and that stuff. So there's, there's options on the table, right. And there's, there are two great options for you. And I think um, the biggest thing for me was I wanted to play the most competitive hockey possible at the time and I wanted the quickest route to pro hockey, right? So if you think about going to college, you have to take two or three years of playing junior or in the USHL or BCHL or OJ or something like that. So two or three years there, and then you do your four years at school, and then you're like, whatever, 23 or 24 coming into pro. Whereas I, I kind of wanted to fast track it, and which a lot of us do in the CHL, and, and you're, you're done at – 20 or even 19 sometimes and and you go and and you take your crack at pro and you always have that um the the biggest thing for me was the school package too at the time I was thinking like okay what if uh this just doesn't go like the way I want and stuff so 
I figure it's a, it's a really good thing to fall back on. And those are basically like kind of the reasonings uh, that I chose uh, to go to the OHL over the NCAA, but uh, I don't knock either option. I think they're, they're both great career paths for, uh, for, for young players. And I think the most important thing is always making sure you're trying to get your schooling. Yep. Yeah, that's very important. And that's what we do at Brock for any overagers in the O or CHL that want to come to Brock. Let me know. Um, <laughs> actually, I think we're coming to talk to the very always this week, Card. Are you? Yeah. Um, Making your rounds. Yeah. Um, now, whose idea was it to start the podcast? Oh, I got to give Rask full 100% credit here. I'll let you explain it. Yeah. Um, been a while since we like told the story, I guess. But yeah, it was my idea. It was right in the middle of hard COVID quarantine with nothing going on. And I texted cards pretty out of the blue. Um, I don't even think we were talking much at that point before. Um, and I was just like, you want to start a hockey podcast? And then he called me and we talked it out. And within like two days, we had our first episode with Cole Perfetti and it happened pretty fast. And there was no looking back from there, really. Yeah. Um, can't dispute that answer. It was pretty spot on. And yeah, no, it was, it was like, hey, let's do this. And just like kind of do it for fun. And now it's like a legit job and we love it. Yeah. Yeah. A good job for sure. Um, yeah. How did you guys meet? Through the Barry Colts. Rask was working as well, like media relations. Yeah. And um, I was obviously doing my thing, playing. Uh, and then I came over the deadline. So we weren't there for that long together. But uh, that's, that's how we met. Yeah. We met at the Budweiser Gardens in London. Cardi drove to the game yeah, on the trade I, deadline. <laughs> I came rushing in in my roots pants and – just uh, just a little bit of a mess trying to move my whole life from Saginaw to Barry uh, with this pit stop in London and get to play the Knights. So that's always fun. But uh, <laughs> you know what? It, 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 good experience. Um, and yeah, good first meet and greet. You come up and you're like, Michael Raskin, media relations. I'll, I'll be handling all the social media. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Did no, I? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> No, I probably no, just right. said, "Hey, man, I'm Michael." No, you're yeah. just like, "Hey, hey, I'm I'm Rask. What's up, bud?" <laughs> I remember, I remember, just I was just asking you questions. I remember, um, when we were sitting out at that first level of like seats before, like you were taping your stick and stuff, and I was just like, "How's it going? Like, how was uh, like, how was the drive?" Like, we were just like, I was trying to make conversation, you know? Yeah, we just because uh, I figured you'd be like, I I'm sure you weren't, but I just assumed you were gonna be nervous and like new team first game and stuff, which you might have been a little. So I was just trying to be nice. Yeah, no, just everyone trying to make me fit in. And that's actually like the weirdest thing. Like a lot of people were always like, oh, like, how did you feel during the trade? Like, were you nervous coming into the new team? And like the OHL now, man, like it's changed a lot as we've talked about on this podcast before. And like in terms of like guys knowing guys on other teams and like being friends with guys, it's crazy. Like the amount of people you kind of know around the OHL now between like, going to camp, um, playing spring hockey growing up, summer training, mutual friends. Like, so like I knew like seven guys or like eight guys on Barry coming in. So it was like, it was like pretty comfortable. And it, and that's another thing I think is crazy. Just, and, and social media plays a factor in that too nowadays with uh, everybody knowing each other. Yeah, definitely makes it a little easier. Um what what's your favorite thing about each other i love this question <laughs> i'll i'll go first um i'd have to say your thoughtfulness and uh how organized you are uh obviously rask is a great partner he's always looking out for me um like you guys saw with the the trophy that i got sitting up uh sitting up in my room now on nice display um, beside my Gavin puck actually. Um, but, uh, no, just, just a thoughtful gift. Not too many people would have, uh, would have put the effort in to do that. And then to go along with that, his organizational skills are off the charts. You can tell this guy is, uh, he's going to do big things in business or whatever he pursues in the hockey world because he's got everything set up perfectly. And, uh, and that's just the way he rolls. So, that has kept our podcast going and kept it so strong. So that's what I love about him. Love it. Thank you. I got uh it's funny because you mentioned the business one. My I, I noted it down. There there's definitely a lot of things, but I I think uh 
one that's kind of hidden that the listeners wouldn't know is that Cardi has a a real business brain you know like you you think business uh really well and when i when we started the podcast some people my friends would be like oh like why cards why cards why did you cho- choose him and stuff and uh i didn't even realize like i just knew okay you're well connected in hockey you speak well like you're funny um but then early i realized you're a really smart business guy and i had no clue that was just a bonus that helped and i didn't know so Cardi's always like helping and talking about the business end and um, he's smart with that. And I think it's a, a big helper for the podcast and then just an important tool for life, especially life after hockey for you. Um, so I'd probably put, put down the, the business side. Yeah. I appreciate that. A lot of people probably didn't even know that before. <laughs> yeah. Um, now we'll see if you know who this one's from. What does Ethan Cardwell want for Christmas? Well, I know it's from my girlfriend because uh, you you wrote it on the sheet because you're that organized. Um, <laughs> and I'm not spilling the beans and keeping it a secret. I just want, I don't even need anything for Christmas. I just want to spend time with family and friends and just have a nice relaxing Christmas break and uh, be grateful and enjoy each other's company. How about you? What do I want for Christmas? Um I haven't even thought about it. So yeah. I don't know. I, I'm my girlfriend knows this. I'm like one of the worst, like hardest people to buy gifts for because like if I want something, I'll just get it. And then the things that uh someone could buy for me, like clothes or like a dress shirt or something, like I'm so picky about stuff like that that you'll almost always get it wrong if you buy it for me. So it's just I'm hard to buy for. You know what isn't a bad idea? Like like when you're buying gifts for somebody like that, just see either get them a gift card or get them an experience gift. Like you can't mess up an experience if yeah, you're like hard to buy for. And, and like you're getting yourself a gift in itself. Like if you're going with someone, you're getting yourself the present. So, I mean, that's not too bad. And then a gift card, if you don't want to like screw up what you're buying for someone, if it's clothing, let them do the shopping. Yeah. Um, one more What's the most memorable goal you've scored in your career? I think I know what you're going to say, but let's hear it. Well, I have two. Um, it's kind of funny. Uh, I think this one's been talked about like a million times on the podcast. Um, the biggest goal in spirit history. Uh, um, no, so uh, I I was like a rookie, obviously didn't play too much and um, – had some goals actually though in my first year um and was playing well so playoffs game one we're down two nothing to uh sarnia and just like to get the boys going went in on a breakaway from fets and buried it and the the whole uh i always say the whole playoff run changed around after that and a lot of the boys do give me credit for that so it's pretty funny um so that that one was pretty cool at the time but Definitely my most memorable goal would have been scoring in overtime last year against Saginaw um, in Barrie to win the game. It was, it was pretty special to go bar down um, on Lenny. So that, that made for a uh, memorable, memorable goal for sure. And one I won't forget for a while. And you got that sick pick with Perfetti like crying in the background. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got me screaming. Uh, and I got cuts in the background, just grumpy face. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's unreal. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think, like, my my most memorable goal, other than, like, my first junior goal, which doesn't really count because I don't even consider myself, like, having played junior. Um, <laughs> my Mine's a summer league goal. And yeah, you, you got to hear this thing. It was – uh just because he's lighting it up right now in the NHL, it was against Sean Dersey. We were playing against him and his team. We play in like a good league, like Marner plays in it and stuff. And uh, it was like the last game of the regular season. People take it pretty seriously. Like Dersey wasn't taking it that seriously, but they were up or it was two, two with like 15 seconds left. And he, um, he like, I'm a defenseman. He tried to flick one out off the glass uh, in his own zone. And I was holding the line and I knocked it down and then put it through his legs and ended up scoring to tie the game or to no. take the lead with like, I don't know, it must've been under five seconds left. Um, and we were all going crazy. And I know it was like summer league and stuff, but that one's my most memorable. And 
And me and this guy were fighting all game. I was giving it to him, bro. I'm not going to say some stuff, but we we hate each other out, out there. I don't know why. Yeah. Rask putting on a show at Summer League. Yeah. Always, man. That, that one was fun. But uh, I guess uh, that, that would be it for the fan questions. So we want to thank all the all the fans for for that and now uh we can send it to the interview but before we do as always you got to remember that it's holiday season and you don't know what to get as a gift or stocking stuffer well today's sponsor manscaped has the tools to guarantee you win this year's stocking stuffer or white elephant competition manscaped is a leader in men's below the waist grooming and they have served more than four million men worldwide if my math is correct that's almost eight million balls get 20 percent off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code showbound Ho, 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 fellas, naughty or nice, tis the season to perform. Manscaped best-selling product is the Performance Package 4.0, which is at the top of every man's wish list this year. Inside, you'll find their lawnmower body trimmer, the best trimmer on the market for your balls, butt, and body, and the weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer. Uh, and let's not forget their famous liquid formulations, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner to maximize your ball hygiene routine. Get the Performance Package now to receive two free gifts, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. The dads can't stop talking about this. The teens secretly buy this, and the women will love you for it. Now, these are our picks for Manscaped Surefire Wind Stocking Stuffers. Number one, the Manscaped 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner. Just launched. Kill two birds with one stone. Number two, the Manscaped Cologne-Infused Body Wash. Number three, Shears 2.0 Luxury 4-Piece Nail Kit. Number four, Crop Mops. Ball wipes for your stanky balls. Number five, Manscaped Signature Cologne. These formulations are all vegan, cruelty-free, dye-free, sulfate-free, and paraben-free, so you know their products are legit. Make sure you hurry to their site to ensure these wild gifts show up before the holiday season. And while you're at it, get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code SHOWBOUND. Whether this is for your partner, dad, brother, friend, get them something they will actually use, and it's almost sure to get a laugh. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code SHOWBOUND. Be the ballsiest gift giver this year with Manscaped. And with that said, let's send it over to Dylan Duke. All right. We're pleased to be joined by uh, Tampa Bay Lightning prospect, Dylan Duke. Duker, welcome to the pod. Thank you. Thanks for having me, boys. Yeah, for sure. So just want to kick it off here. Just kind of, you're off to a good start at Michigan this year, and you guys got a uh, good team. So how have things been going there? Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty sick, like, playing with a lot of these guys, like Power and Beneers and Johnson, Husey, uh, Boards, Briss. Like, it's pretty sick, so. Um, pretty stacked team, but no, I think we just got to keep, uh, playing the right way. Like, like it's hard to win in college hockey if you don't play the right way every night. So, yeah, definitely. And I want to know, so you're taking this from the dorm room right now. So you, we were just talking about it a little bit before the episode. So, uh, do you mind telling the listeners what's going on there and, uh, who's your roommate this year? If you got one. Yeah. So, uh, Luke, he's my roommate. And then, um, you know, it's, it's pretty fun living in the dorms. Uh, you know, you get to meet other people that aren't athletes and stuff. So that's kind of cool. Meet other people, people always walking around doing something. So you could just honestly, some nights we'll just go like, just go be a mess in the dorms, do whatever, hang out. Um, yeah. Typical college stuff. So it's pretty fun. <laughs> stuff we can't say on the air, but that's good. So how, how's the school part of it going? Like, are you good in school? Are you keeping your grades up and stuff or? Yeah, I mean, I do pretty good in school. I think more just, like, you just got to be on top of it. Like, if you, like, kind of, like, sometimes, like, a week, like, oh, like, I don't really want to do anything, like, you'll get behind. But um, you'll st- if you stay on top of it, like, it's not that bad. Like, it's pretty easy. So, I mean, you just got to do your do your schoolwork, and then I'll you know, get to the rank and have fun. Do you get to pull, like, hockey team privileges to get yourself in or maybe a little help with assignments or something like that, an uh, extension or skip one? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess a little bit. I think all the teachers kind of know because we're always traveling. Like, if we have to go away for a week, like, they send us a letter that we get to send our teachers. So they kind of know, like, we're pretty busy. And, um, you know, we still have to do all the work. It's just, you know, if you're away, like, they'll give you, like, maybe a little more time or help you out a little bit. I want to – I'm going to give you a college tip. This one's funny for the people in, like, university in Canada and stuff. Teachers, like professors, hate being called teachers because they're all they all they're salty if you don't even call them doctor. So if someone's listening, you they hear you saying teacher, they're gonna freak on you. No, yeah, professor. yeah, I guess it, yeah, it's definitely a professor. So <laughs> kind of forgot about that, but yeah, still learning, still a freshman. 
Yeah, there you go. Um, now, can you confirm this with me? I read it online, but were you 14 when you committed to Michigan? Uh, yeah, I was in ninth grade, so whatever that was. Uh, yeah, like I, th- I think that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. So what was that process like um, committing that early? Did you do any tours of other schools or anything like that? Did you tour Michigan? Like, was it just, I want to go to Michigan. This is my choice. They want you and you just sign it up. I mean, yeah, it was kind of like that. Like I always wanted to go to Michigan, like had the opportunity. Like I had a couple other schools in mind, but like they weren't like, it wasn't like where like, Oh, I like, I, I know I want to go here, but it, for Michigan, it was like, I know I want to go here. And so I was just like, yeah, I guess uh, when I had the opportunity, you were that young, you were just like, yeah, like this is awesome. Let's do it. And, uh, you know, throughout those, you know, years of high school where I was waiting to, to be able to go here, like it never, never crossed my mind that I wanted to go to a different school. Um, just one that popped in my head. What are those, like those electric scooter things? Is there a name for those that like, I saw you riding up on one. Yeah. Yeah. The, the birds, I have a bird and then my roommate has a spin. Okay. Is that like a gift from the team or something? I see all the pictures and the TikToks and stuff you guys riding in. No, it's actually, so we got to campus and like, it was kind of a lot of walking because like freshmen, we don't have cars because we're living in the dorms and nowhere to park. So like we're walking to class, walking to the rink, like walking all around. And after the first week, we were like, let's get some scooters or something. So we ordered some scooters online. They came in, we just wheel, wheel around campus on scooters. It's pretty fun. That's outrageous, man. I saw the picture. I think Luke Hughes might've posted it of, of uh, you guys rolling into the rink on the scooter. Yeah. Together. Oh no, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, that that's pretty awesome. Get some looks on campus flying by in one of those. Um, I wanted to ask your brother. He's committed to Notre Dame, and uh, did you guys ever talk about him coming to Michigan playing together? Was that ever a conversation? Yeah, I mean it was definitely a conversation, and I mean, <laughs> so crazy story. Actually, he just decommitted uh, from Notre Dame, uh, probably like a week or two ago. And uh, actually committed to Ohio State now. So okay, um, he's going to go to Ohio State next year. I mean, obviously, it was talked about, like, it'd be cool to play college hockey together, be on the same team again. You know, we grew up playing on the same team. But at the end of the day, you know, he had to do what, what he felt was the best thing for him. And I did what was the best thing for me. And, um, you know, I think it's kind of good to go our separate ways and, you know, create our own paths. And, um, you know, I think he's going to love Ohio State. I mean, he's happy about it. So that's really all that that I could ask for and I love it here at Michigan so uh we'll we'll, we'll get to play against each other and you know be rivals yeah that that's actually sick and uh that'll be a tough one for your parents and actually for just for uh the listeners so you know a little backstory on how like we got Duke around the pod this week our dads played together at Western Michigan University so was there any talk about you going to Western ever you ever uh, not that? really I mean not really you know my dad obviously like loved western like he has a ton of great stories like tells me stories about cards his dad all the time like they're always talking so um i mean he loved his time at western i'm sure i know your dad did too because they've told me they the fun they had but um i think when it came down to it i just really wanted to go to michigan and uh that's what i did but yeah, not a bad school to be at, but um, we're going to send it back to like kind of before Michigan, you went to the program. We've had a few guys on from the program who have had all different experiences. But first, I want to touch on the fact that you're drafted by the SAG spirit in the OHL. Um, and I know like SAG's been doing a good job of recruiting their NCAA guys. I know I talked to you a little bit after the draft and everything, trying to get you to come. But uh, were you ever even thinking about it at all? Or were you just like, no, school for sure? Uh, I think it was, you know, it was always school for sure for me. I think like just like always that, like growing up in the Midwest around Michigan, like college hockey, you know, my dad played college, like uncle played at Western too. So it was always kind of school for me. And that's just kind of when I had the opportunity with Michigan, I, I just couldn't pass it up to be honest. Mm-hmm. And how did you find your first year at the program? I know we've had, who was it? Rask, was it Jones? Max yeah. Jones on the podcast who said it was like a gong show for him, just like so much work and stuff. But how was it for you? Yeah, I mean it's it's a lot of work, but for me, I found it I found it like a huge step in like becoming a better hockey player, a better person. Like 
like they put you to work every day. Like you're going, you're battling in practice, like weight room. We're working out two hours a day, like really hard. And um, I think it's just good all around for your body and um, to develop as a hockey player there. I think they do a great job. Like I love, I love my time at the program. Like it wouldn't change it uh, for anything. Yeah, definitely. And like, how'd you guys do that first year? Did your team do well? Cause I know you guys had a really good roster. Yeah, we did. We did well our first year. Like, um, we started off, I think like USA, like we started playing the USHL, we play a couple of null games first, got going in the USHL. I think we lost our first like five or six USHL games straight, like kind of struggled. And then, uh, we ended up going on like a 10 game win streak in the USHL where we just won 10 straight our 17 year. And like, that was like our highlight. Like we were just buzzing all around. Uh, we got to go to Russia twice. Like we won, won one of the tournaments in Russia lost the other one to Russia. So, I mean, we, we had a good team. Like, we had a lot of fun, like, great guys. So, it was definitely a fun time. Yeah, and I want to just kind of know, like, we hear a lot, because we have a lot of CHL guys on, right? So, they talk about, like, the development between their first year and then the confidence in the second year. So, for you, staying with the same group of guys going to the 18 year, how did you find your game and how did you – find yourself as a, a player and a person kind of developing into a bigger role and knowing it's your draft year yeah I think like you get that first year under your belt like it's huge like you go in you know what to expect your 18 year like um you know all the guys like you're already comfortable you already played full year in the in the USHL you got some international player under your belt so like you just you're going in you feel good and um you know you just kind of gotta use that to you know, what you learned your 17 year and just play. And I think that's what we did and, you know, it worked out for us. You got to play, we got to play a couple NCAA games our 18 year and those went well. So. Yeah. And you got any funny stories or memories that kind of pop into your head from the program at all? If not, no worries. Yeah. I think like probably the biggest thing was just like the bus rides with the guys. Like we were kind of a wild group. Like we'd have a lot of fun on the bus. Like, you win in, in Madison or something and you got a, you got a bus six hours home or whatnot. And just kind of, you know, we'd play some music in the back and kind of mess with you, mess with each other, throw some water bottles around. But one time like kind of escalated real quickly and we just got in a full water fight on the back of the bus. <laughs> we're just throwing water around and it's just, you know, those, those memories that you could kind of savor forever and, you know, fun times that, that you won't get back. Yeah, actually, I got one more thing, Ras, before I send it over to you. So I've never asked this one. So you guys, obviously, you're all the same age and everything like that. So how's the bus work? Like, I was going to ask the, that. Who's getting, who's getting the back seats on the bus and stuff like that? Uh, we just we would just fight for them, to be honest. Like, just go at it with each other. And, yeah, it basically just turn into a fight every time we had to get on the bus for who gets to sit where. Yeah, because it's like it's just like an older – minor hockey team still because you're like you're you're with the same group all kids your own age which is you don't see very often but they're doing a good job so I was wondering that's kind of that's kind of funny in a sense I I imagine there would be tons of tilts over that but Rask you got uh you got some stuff here eh yeah that that came into my head too it's funny I was gonna ask that but I also want to know like who's picking up pucks who's doing rookie duty yeah just everyone does everything yeah we would just kind of we would just kind of all do it like for like cleaning the locker room we just rotate through like two guys just clean and then picking up pucks just last guys on the ice pick them up so okay yeah and then even in the 18 year you got to do rookie duties twice kind of and yeah you just thought about that it's the same thing same thing 18 year just go through the whole whole process again now you got to go to michigan too three three rookie years in a row basically that's interesting (laughs) yeah but um the other one i wanted to ask pretty unrelated to anything but um, for all the foodies listening, like how's the food on the bus rides in the program? Like, I know some teams have good food after buffets. Some teams are getting pizza every time. Like what was the food? Like we would get some good food. Uh, yeah, we'd definitely get some good food, like chicken parm sandwiches, or sometimes we'd get some olive garden. Like food was always good. Like after a big weekend, like they'd get us some pizza and everyone would get all fired up. So <laughs> it was good. Do you like dipping sauce with your pizza? Yeah. Ranch every time. Okay, good. Cards, do you like it with your pizza? Yeah, I'm a ranch guy as well. All right, same. Okay, good. I was just in a heated debate about dipping sauce on like on pizza with some guys on the team. Um, now, 
yeah, I, I did want to talk about the NHL draft because that 18 year was your was your draft year, and you got uh, drafted by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Five picks behind Cardi, by the way, in the fourth round. But <laughs> did you find yourself uh, like checking the ranks a lot in in your draft? You're kind of seeing where scouts are writing you, like that sort of stuff. Was that on your mind? Uh, not too much. Like I think mostly it was just to play, and that kind of would take care of itself. So um, wasn't too worried about that uh, during the year. Just kind of play, do my best, and and see what happens uh, at the draft. Yeah, and I think. In Canada, cards, maybe you can confirm this. I think there was some rules in place because it was COVID that scouts or teams couldn't directly contact players in person. Um, so were you talking to a lot of teams in person or, or having Zoom meetings? Like, how was that stuff going? Um, for me, it was pretty much, like, all on Zoom. I think you couldn't really do in-person meetings. So it was Zoom, like, some questionnaires online and then um, pretty much all Zoom calls. Okay, and, and yeah, like I said, fourth round of Tampa. So can you talk about your NHL draft day and the moment you were picked, how it all went down for you and what happened after? Yeah, so it was actually pretty cool. So <clears throat> I was at the World Junior Summer Showcase in uh, Plymouth, Michigan there, and uh, draft was going on. I was actually, when I got picked, I was in the locker room uh, getting ready. I just threw my jersey on. We had practice. I was about to go on the ice. So I put my jersey on and then, we had a down the halls, our training room, and uh, they had the draft on in there. And our trainer from the NTDP was in there and um, a couple of the guys. And I heard a scream and then uh, I heard our trainer yelling Duker down the hall. So I kind of figured that I probably got drafted and he ran in, gave me a hug, congratulations or whatever. And I was just kind of uh, standing there. I was like, yeah, so what team was it? And uh, he was like Tampa Bay. And uh I was like, I, I just kind of – my phone started buzzing behind me, and then um, I just kind of let all the calls go to voicemail because um, I we had to go on the ice. So, like, the coaches <laughs> were coming in the locker room in a minute to draw up some stuff on the board, so I couldn't answer any of the calls really. So I was just kind of sitting in the locker room. We were all listening to the coach, and my everyone could just hear my phone on the back of the stall just zing, 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 just with calls <laughs> and texts. So um, it was kind of funny. Yeah, that's that's sweet. And actually, I want to know: Were you Tampa's first pick this year? Uh, they, I, they had a so they had a third round pick. They picked the guy from our NTDP team, plays in Kitchener now, Roman Schmidt. So they picked oh, okay. him in the third, and then uh, they and then yeah, me in the fourth. Yeah, so the first four were taken anyway. So yeah, he's got the uh, he's got the contract waiting for him, Ross. Whenever he decides <laughs> to go ruling, okay? yeah, that's not a bad. Uh... A bad option. Actually, here's a kind of follow-up question too. Are you are you set on four years, like graduate at Michigan, or if if they offered you a contract, are you taking it? Oh uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of just uh, take it year by year, and you know, see what they say. Um, you know, talk with my family. I think it's more just year by year, and you know, I think you know, a couple of years of college is good for me. You know, the more the better. I mean, you're just gonna keep getting stronger, better at hockey, and you know, it'd be easier transition, you know, the more experience you get at the college level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to know too, I just quickly kind of going back to comparing like college to NTDP. Um, so like you guys probably, you did, probably didn't get like amazing crowds when you're in NTDP. So now that you're in college and you're playing in that atmosphere every night at Yost, what's, what's that like? Like how was it like a shock at first? Like when you played your first few games? Yeah, it was definitely pretty cool. I mean, NTP like they get, get a decent crowd for some games like it's not not crazy uh it's nothing like Yost like when you can't come out at Yost like so like we've pretty much had every game this year sold out so you come out and it's just buzzing and the student section is unbelievable so it's pretty cool to play in front of that and, yeah it's definitely a little bit of a different experience and you know it's been really fun so far yeah that's unbelievable and I just want to confirm um, so Tampa, I know Tampa didn't have a uh, development camp or anything. So you haven't been down to Tampa yet, eh? No. So actually we are going on vacation to Florida anyway, after, uh, after the draft for vacation, just kind of a weekend. We already plan on going down to Florida, St. Pete beach, one of my family's favorite spots to go on vacation. It's like probably like 35 minutes from Tampa. So when it ended up being Tampa, we ended up, you know, just, we drove down, met with the GM, got to see the rink. Um, and then for a day and then got back to our vacation spot. 
that's unreal. That is, that is sick. So that kind of works out perfect for your family too, going forward for uh, when they vacation down there, you just got to make sure you're playing in the show or else you'll be stuck in <laughs> Syracuse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so now you're on a stack team full of future NHL stars. So I know you were talking about that earlier, but uh, how's that been for you? Just kind of learning things from those guys this year. Yeah, it's been sick. Like power, veneers, like those guys just work so hard every day. It's pretty cool to play with them. And then, you know, you see what they do in the game. It's pretty cool to play with and kind of be a part of that. And yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable. So Owen Power, obviously first overall pick in the NHL. Pretty rare. I'd say super rare that the first overall pick doesn't play for that team they're drafted to so what's he like now coming back with that confidence of like he can go to the nhl anytime he wants so he can dominate what, what's he like in the locker room uh he's just a great guy i mean like you wouldn't even you would have no idea that he went first overall like if you just talk to him or see what he's like in the locker room like he acts like everyone else and which is pretty cool to see and know how humble he is and um yeah i mean i have a million great things to say about him you think mm-hmm. we can get him on the pod card? I don't know. Probably, I don't know. Would you uh, think he'd do something like that, Duker? I don't know. Maybe. I I've never no seen idea. him do any media, honestly. Yeah, he's not. I don't think he's big, like big with media or and stuff like that. He's pretty hum- very humble guy. I I can maybe pull some strings. My my good buddy's dating his sister. Maybe we can go through the family side. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. <laughs> So we talked to boards a few weeks ago. We had him on the pod and we were talking about Brisson on the pod. So like, what's he like in the room? Cause boards was saying he's a character and I know boards is a character too, though. Yeah. I mean, Briss is, Briss is hilarious. Like he's always, always got something to say, always something funny to say. Same with boards. So, I mean, those guys are hilarious together. Like Brit, I love Briss. Like just so funny. Like he just, everything he does, he just cracks me up. Even on the ice. Like, He's just funny kid. Who's uh who's DJ on in the locker room? Uh Jack Levy, one of our goalies. Definitely always DJ. Goalie DJ. Uh, yeah, wow, he yeah, does a good I've job too. So like is this like he's starting the game and he's just worried about the music? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I, he he loves it. He's just senior, so he's got 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 it down with the boys like to hear. Okay, yeah. Well, fair enough. You do whatever works. And uh, I know you were talking about the boys being funny. So if you had to go funniest guy on the team, who would it be? Oh, I, I'd probably go with Nolan Moyle. I mean, he's hilarious. Great guy. Just always, always a good comment. Something to say. Uh, he's a senior. So I sit next to him in the locker room too. So I get to hear all his, all his funny comments. So you get the best of it. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to do some, uh, personality questions here with you. So we kind of go into, uh, a different segment of things here, um, more about yourself. So how would your teammates describe you? Uh, I think they'd say funny guy keeps a light in the locker room. Um, work hard too on the ice. So, uh, probably my key working hard. That's about, it's about all I got Just work hard. <laughs> it's a hardworking guy. What's your major right now? Uh, sports management. So not too bad. There you go, Rask. Yeah, I graduated in sport management. Let's go. Oh boy. Um, what's your favorite and least favorite class right now? Mm. Favorite English, just because we have a great teacher. Um, Professor. Least favorite, probably nutrition and wellness. Just a lot of busy work. Yeah. Um, weird one here. How do you eat a cupcake? Oof. Uh, unwrap it, bite from bite the whole thing. Okay, yeah, you got to get it all in there. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, eh. Rask, you you do it different. You're a weirdo though. So no, nah, top down, really top down. Everyone, yeah, not a big frosting guy to be honest. So I got to mix it all up. Yeah, me either. Um, uh, favorite TV show? Ooh, um. I'd go with The Office. Okay, classic. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty classic pretty, answer there. What are you yeah. watching right now? Are you watching anything right now or no time? Yeah, r- right now I'm uh, re-watching Vampire Diaries. Probably my second favorite. <laughs> Not bad. Um, one song that can always get you fired up. 
Uh, UCLA for sure. Yes, let's go. That's the same with me. <laughs> yeah, I get chirped yeah. for it, but it's a banger. It's good. That's a good tune for sure. I will actually like Rask before you kind of go into like I know we got a bunch of fan questions and stuff here, but um, have you been at going to any of the football games? Yeah, we got to go to one at the beginning of the year before we started playing games. It's sick atmosphere. Like they're they're buzzing right now, so it's pretty cool around campus. Like people are going nuts for them. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Obviously, they're looking amazing right now and setting up well for the playoffs. But do you guys have a relationship with them at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, we know a couple of the freshman guys. They live in the same dorm as us, so we've met a couple of them. They're good guys. We have a couple of them are in our English class, too, so talk to them a little bit. And how, how big are these freshmen? They got to be huge men. Like, how old are they, too? Like, are they 18, like you guys? Yeah, I think some of them are 18, maybe 19 for the most part. But, yeah, there's there's definitely some big boys. Yeah, I was going to say, they, like, to be on the top school, like, that must be sick with all the hype going on at the school about them right now, too. And then you guys having, like, the best team or, like, the best draft picks in a long time. So, a lot of hype in Michigan right now. Yeah, it's definitely pretty cool around campus. People are buzzing. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of nasty. Um, going into a few fan questions. What stick do you use and what specs on it? Uh, right now I use the Flylight uh, P92 Curve 77 Flex. Pretty simple. Okay. Or Hyperlight, um, actually. Okay. <laughs> <Doesn't even laughs> know I don't even know. They keep changing them. <laughs> I just keep getting the newest vapor. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> big time. Um, do you, What's the first thing you'll buy when you sign a contract? Or like any, any dream purchases you kind of want to make? Ooh, like a dream purchase, like probably, you probably wouldn't be able to afford it on your first contract, but my dream pur- purchase would be a lake house. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're looking for like a second deal. Like, after yeah, I mean, you're, you yeah, you might have to get like a couple deals to get a lake house, but I mean, that would be my dream purchase. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, like I know in the NCAA now you can get sponsors and stuff. Do you have any sponsors? Uh, not really. I mean, you'll get like DMs from like random like shoe brands or something like that, but you, I don't really respond to any of them. Like, I don't really have any right now. So, is okay. there is there any is there any barstool athletes on your team? No, none of the, none of the guys did the barstool <laughs> athlete thing. <laughs> <laughs> I would have cried laughing if there was. That would that yeah, that would have been good. Yeah. Um. Do you do you have a financial manager guy, or will you at one point? He doesn't have any money yet, Rob. Yeah, oh, yeah. But for sponsors, <laughs> I'm just like, an agent. like, are you allowed agents now with the sponsor thing, or no? Um, I mean, you could have a family advisor, like for ho- for the hockey side, but right now, really, no need for for any financial advisors, I guess. Okay, well, I'll run a quick ad for the financial advisors. The the guys at Gavin Hockey Well Specialists. If you want a lake house when you retire. They'll get you a lake house, man. They'll tell you how to manage your money, how to like they'll do the investing for you, save you money on taxes, you know, pay your credit card bill, give you give you everything you need to to you know live life after hockey without needing to work. So for you and for the listeners, check them out at gavingroup.ca and you'll be you'll be set up nice with your money forever. So once again, shout out Gavin for being being the best there is in the business. But anyway, back to hockey stuff. Uh, do you have any pregame? Like, do you have a routine or superstitions kind of on, on a game day you can't miss? Yeah, I think it's just probably doing the same stretch before the game. Take my stick in the morning so it's done. I don't have to do it when I get back to the rink. I mean, that's about it. I kind of kind of just walk around, <laughs> kind of really do nothing, just walk around, talk to guys. Yeah, keep it light. <laughs> yeah, keep it light. Nothing, okay. nothing like crazy stick handling routines or anything. Does anyone on the team have any crazy ones, like jumping up on boxes or doing anything crazy? Uh, not really. I think it's all pretty simple. Like, some guys will go out on the ice and stick handle, something like that. But for the most part, guys pretty much just do the same same small things every game. Mm-hmm. Question for both of you guys. Do you think that the, the age of, like, the pregame routine and superstition is kind of dying? Like, you find guys are, are starting to shake that stuff and, you know, keep it light before games more? Cards, you go first. I don't know. I got some weirdo. I got some weirdos on my team who are just like really weird about all their superstitions. I mean, it's like I don't know. It's I I I think maybe a little bit, 
um, because everyone's kind of becoming so loose all the time now. Like, I feel like the game's becoming a lot looser in, like, the locker room and stuff. But, like, I feel like there's still, like, some guys – and like me too, like myself, I always have to put my left on first, even though I'm not like a superstitious guy or anything really, but that's just something I do. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I think, yeah, a little bit because of how light the room's getting and stuff like that. I think too, like some people, um, I remember there was one on Barry cards. <laughs> I'm not going to say the name, but uh, like some people, if they mess something up with their rituals, they'll freak out and, you know, me- they're mentally checked out of the game. And so I find people are like cutting down on some of that stuff so they don't have to panic before games. And, you know, if they miss the exact second, they're going to do something or yeah. like if you didn't put your left shin pad on first, I don't think you'd be like, oh, I'm going to have a bad game now. It's just kind of habit, I think, more than superstition, right? Yeah, exactly. What do you think, Duker? See, for me, like I go everything right first, like anything that I do on game day, like it's got to be right first. And like, if I accidentally like put on my, like I have a couple times accidentally put on my left shin pad first or something, like I'll take it off and put my right one on. Cause it's just in my head that something's going to go wrong if I don't. Okay. So, yeah. like, I guess I am a little superstitious about that. See, I'm asked. I'm kind of like that too, in a sense. Cause like, if I don't like, if I put one skate on and I start tying it, I untie it and I got to get the other one on before I can start on the one too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being superstitious. I was just posing the question, just thinking about it. Um, yeah. Who is the best chirper you've ever played with? Oh, uh, best chirper I've ever played with. Got to be Marcus Stampa for sure. He's on the team now. Really good chirper. Is okay. he really good, eh? Yeah. Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, so I, I played with Stampa, like, growing up a little bit in spring hockey and stuff like that. So that's interesting to hear. Actually, you know what? He was a bit of, like, a – a bit of a character back then too. So I could, I could see that for sure. He's a good yeah. dude. Though. Real good. Yeah, he's actually, good. He was committed to Western and then he. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Just like our dads. He didn't want to follow in their footsteps. No, who would? Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I want to know also why uh, our next question. Sorry. 56. Why do you wear it? Uh, so my dad, my dad and uncle were both on, on Western with your dad. I, those couple years and so they were they were d partners and uh my dad was five my uncle was six so that's pretty sick. Threw those together yeah <laughs> nasty yeah and you your brother wears five right yeah yeah he he went with my dad's i normally go 25 if like i can but someone was 25 and then my u17 you have to be 30 and up and so that's where i came up with the 56 and then this year when I couldn't wear 25, went back to the 56. Uh, yeah, that's my camp number two in San Jose. I actually like it too. It's a good look. But like, it is a good look. I want to know what you, you guys' thoughts are. Like, what are the guys at the program saying about like the numbers on how you kind of get like brutal number selection? You don't get great selection. Like, what, what do the boys feel about that? Yeah, I think it's just like you kind of look at like the guys before and see what numbers they wore and like what looks cool on a jersey. So like I, there was nobody that was 56 the year before me, but I just kind of came up with it. But like, if I could, I'd pick a different number or like yeah. other guys, like just pick one that looks cool. Yeah, for sure. Ras. Yeah. So if, if you, let's say you make Tampa next year and they're <laughs> offering you 25 or 56, which one would you take after now wearing 56 in college? Definitely. That probably go back to 25. Okay. Yeah. Who um who is um who was your first college goal against? Uh Lake Superior State. Oh, greasy up in the Sioux. Yeah, we <laughs> it was at home, but okay. Uh, yeah, we were playing them. They came down. So how'd you score it? Uh Bersan chipped it in. The goalie kind of grabbed it like with his stick and tried to put it behind the net. And I just had a foot race with a guy and kind of took out it kind of took out his legs a little bit and just grabbed the puck and wrapped it around. So, yeah, yeah, they all work, right? Yeah. Whatever goes greasy, in the doesn't matter. Greasy one. Yeah. You, yeah. Say, you said you're a hardworking guy, so that uh, you got to be greasy. You got to play greasy. That's good stuff. I love yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Did um, I saw you were, uh, I saw some clips. You were on like the first power play unit playing net front. You still rocking that? Or well, I don't know if it was first unit actually, but you were in net front. Yeah, we kind of we kind of got two units, like two really good units that kind of switch off, like whoever's up. But uh, yeah, I just played in that front still, and it's kind of my spot. 
yeah, get ready. It'll all change once you get a cage on. You're more scared about losing jibs and or <laughs> sorry, a visor. You visor, got the cage yeah. action right now. Yeah. Rask? I mean, that's kind of – that's all I got. I'll, I'll send it to you, Cars, to, to finish up. But I just wanted to thank you for your time and, uh, you know, chatting with us. I think it's a good interview, one that a lot of the listeners are going to be excited to hear and, uh, you know, hear about the Michigan lifestyle. So, Cards, I'll, I'll let you finish up. Yeah, no, just appreciate you taking the time. Uh, obviously, you're really busy. You got to get your school done. Try to focus on hockey a little bit too. So, yeah. no, just ap- appreciate you doing it especially just getting uh, down and dirty in the dorm room. You couldn't even get a quiet space, whatever you have to do. But uh, no, thanks, bro. And all the best this year. Yeah, thanks, Cards. You too. And uh, thank, thank you both. All right. I want to thank Dylan Duke for that. It was cool. We we always say, like, it's it's interesting to hear from someone who's not the major junior guys because we obviously we got a lot of CHL guys. And, um, you know, it's cool hearing about Michigan. Uh, obviously a pretty storied school, so. Yeah, it was good to have him on a good interview. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. I mean, it's always fun to catch up with a school guy. And I know we talked to boards about it too. So kind of the the same thing, but it's different living as a freshman, probably like first time living, or I guess they lived on their own at the program before, but uh, so they have that billet lifestyle and then all of a sudden they're in a dorm and I, I wonder how a dorm would be like, I don't know how I would do in a dorm. Like, I feel like you're just so confined and everything, but uh no, it's, it was, it was nice to hear from him and uh, no, he's doing well at school right now. And they got a powerhouse there in NCAA hockey. So definitely uh, one to keep an eye on for the next few months here as they make a run. Yeah. Now I lived in the dorms my first year uh, at Brock here. And so, yeah, for them, like, I imagine it's the same for them. You get a meal plan and stuff, so they're not cooking or anything. You go down to the meal hall, like you get your food and all that. That was the best part, man, because you're living on your own. But whenever you want food, you just go downstairs, you get whatever food you want. And, and it's like on a, on your meal card or whatever, like you don't actually see yourself paying money. You just know you have unlimited food. Like you can just go and eat whatever you want all the time. That was the best part, man. You'll never experience anything like that. And that's why the freshman 15 is so real, man. And all the food and those things is like unhealthy and you know, it, there is healthy stuff too, but you know, you can just having that much access to that much food. Like I can see why people are putting on some yeah. weight. Yeah. That's greasy. I love it though. Like I, I mean, I would find myself, man, I bet you like, I'm, I'm so good at eating healthy too. It'd be like, I, I bet you this would happen. This is what always happens to me anyway. Um, so I'll eat like really good all day. Like wake up, great breakfast, lunch, have pack of like a beautiful salad, dinner, come home, eat right, have my protein shake. And then I find myself at like 10 o'clock watching the Edmonton Oilers. And I'm like, ah, I need some food. And then I go up there and it's fruit or ice cream. And then you always go for the ice cream. Yeah. I just, just got, I'm, I'm looking at them now. I, I don't really have a lot of candy ever. Like when I have fruit or a snack, it's always fruit or something like that. But I've just been dying for like chocolate lately. And I'm looking at them there over on my fridge. I got these M&Ms. They're a variety M&M pack and it has dark chocolate, milk chocolate and white chocolate flavors and uh, peanuts. And uh, you don't know which one you're going to get. Like any color could be any type of chocolate on the inside. So it's like a fun little m M&M game but now i'm just like i'm on the m M&M m's grind that is pretty sick but you also like you can't throw a bunch in at once or else you're gonna get like the dark chocolate with the milk yeah. and it would just be i always a- bite it i just take one and i bite the half and i look inside and i see which one i'm eating <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh my god you would be um, that guy too yeah uh what was i gonna say um Oh yeah, all the all the Brock guys on the team. They had a team outing last night. Went to the Bills game where the Bills obviously lost. But uh, I'm looks like I'm going to the Bills game in two weeks. Finally, after been saying every week that I'm going to get to a game, and it looks like I finally am. Right, I'm excited for you. That's going to be unbelievable. Um, you'll have to go early and get the whole experience, and uh, yeah. uh, fill fill me along with that, all of our listeners in when you come back and. Quickly to touch on, I know the Bills lost. Um, Packers update. Oh, I haven't even been following the I'm so fired up about the Bills lately. Um, um, well, I up. do know that um, the Cowboys did win on Thursday night. So back in the win column, a big one, much needed win. So we're looking good again. And uh, and yeah, and it was actually cool to hear about the, the fact that they kind of mesh with the football players a little bit too at Michigan because Michigan is on absolute fire right now. I know. Yeah, they're like they have a good chance. Like I'm gonna pick um, 
I don't know. This sounds so cliche, but I'm picking Alabama to win it all for the national championship for football. But um, Michigan, Michigan's no slouch. I feel like they, uh, they could, uh, they could do some damage potentially. I saw, I don't know if you see this at all, but Western in Canada, they won the Vanier cup, the Canadian national championship. You see that? Yeah, I did actually. That's kind of nasty. I'm, I'm wondering, and I don't think you'd have the answer to this, but the, like the quarterback of the Western team who, you know, just won the Vanier cup is probably the best quarterback in all of Canada. Could he play in the NCAA? No, I don't know. It's hard to say though, because like, even if you go to like a mid pack school as a good quarterback and stuff, like, like a guy like Dak Prescott, I'm pretty sure he went to Mississippi state. Um, and now he's like, he went fourth round in the NFL and Mississippi state's not like a, like a marquee school. And like a bunch of these quarterbacks kind of come from these like schools that are mid pack and stuff. So that just like makes me wonder like how good of a caliber is like NCAA college football. Like it's unbelievable, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, I mean, my, my buddy who I mentioned is like dating Owen Powers sister in the interview. He's a football player and he, their quarterback, like in Canada, he plays uh, for the university of Guelph. And uh, he said their quarterback was like a third string NCAA guy who like was never going to play there and, and came to Guelph and, you know, could be the star. Right. So I think like, I guess that's the comparison maybe. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty fair comparison, but yeah, I don't think like the high end ones, but definitely maybe like a mid pack back to a lower end one potentially, okay. but uh, this isn't a football podcast. It's a, uh, ho- uh, you've been watching any hockey lately. I don't think I watched one game last week. If I'm being honest, I'm, I'm trying to think. Yeah. I don't, not even the Leafs, man. So, and I know the Leafs are playing now. I think they're winning. I saw Nick Ritchie scored. So that's a rare occurrence. Yeah. Three, nothing Leafs after the first Matthews, Nylander and Ritchie. Not bad. Yeah. But we're looking for silly to do some damage here. Yeah. Silly's having a year, man. You know what? So many of our podcast alum are, are having a good season. Even uh, Seth Jarvis is nasty, man. Yeah. Buzzing. And I'm interested to see, right? Like, Obviously, the camp came, invites came out for Canada, as we talked about Clarkie a little bit earlier on in the episode. But um, I'm interested to see if Canada, like if Columbus or like Carolina lets Jarvie or Silly go back and play in the World Juniors. So we'll have to see because like guys like that kind of just put the team right over the top. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'd imagine they, they wouldn't let them go just because they're contributing at the NHL level. And they're probably like, we don't want to lose you for, you know, two weeks, three weeks, a month, whatever. Um, yeah exactly so that yeah you're right about that and I wonder who on the American side like who they're missing can Jack Hughes still play or no is he too old how old is he no he's one year too old he could have played last year but um no he's too old so it's like my I'm the like it's oh two is like the oldest age now for the world juniors um but yeah I know uh Olsen from our team's leaving next week for it so I'm excited to watch it because like I know so many guys in it this year like and we've probably had on like a few like a like a, a good chunk of guys that are going to be playing in the world juniors this year and I'm sure we'll get a bunch of the guys on after the world juniors whoever wins gold will have to get a uh, player on from them for sure yeah. whether it's Canada U.S. or anyone really did Cozy get invited he's an 01 is he is yeah, that, he just oh, okay. So oh, he could be playing pro this now. year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I mean, he's he's. I'd say like, I mean, I don't want to say that. like he's too good for the O. Like he's he's really good, you know. Um, he's lighting it up right now. Yeah, yeah. he's that's doing crazy good. I saw actually that's another showbound bump. Cozy signing. Yeah, <laughs> just um, add that to our list of things. Yeah, I mean, anyway, like we could we could be talking all night if we wanted to, but do you want to uh, take it away with the usual outro? Maybe uh, maybe make, I'll put you on the spot. Something different that you don't say every time. Go, like run with it. Go. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, just threw threw a twist at you. Yeah, well, I I the weather was a factor this week, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but uh, well, I guess I could mention Christmas a bit. And the countdown is on. We're 18 days away from Christmas. I know everyone's looking forward to it. I know I'm getting in the Christmas spirit. Um, the tree's up, the lights are up, and uh, it's all ready to go for Santa Claus to come to town. So 
Um, I hope everyone else is uh, in the holiday spirit and having a great time and uh, really li listens to this episode and really enjoys it. So uh, we'll be back to you next week and uh, we'll be one week closer to uh, Christmas Eve, which we can't wait for. So everyone have a good week and uh, we'll touch base next time.